So we got Diamond Dave, okay. legit hippie figure well, here. Well, let's see. I'm sure you <laughs> still a survivor. I'll put it that way. Yeah. So you, so we have a survivor of the '60s, of Summer of Love, of the scene in San Francisco. And, and as we were talking, you've you've dabbled in many scenes, cultural, social scenes in San Francisco. But we're mainly looking at examining the counterculture of the '60s, the Summer of Love, etc., and looking for the resonating impact, looking for the wisdom that they were trying to espouse there that maybe we should be looking at now because our current political culture warmongering and capitalism to the hilt and greed running everything so we we i think we still need a little bit what's of rebellion. To, what's to be done what's to be done yeah and what's to be done you see uh, I'm, I'm i'm 79 soon to be 80 born on november 12 1937. so you're right i uh, i first got here in 1957 and soon right up here in North Beach. I think you walked in. That's not far where I, this isn't far where I started out in North Beach. Because that's where we were. What Hate Street was to that summer, that summer of love, North Beach was to the beats. Right in the 50s beforehand, in, early 19, 60s. I'm talking about 1957 right. is when I came in. Okay. And of course, and uh, soon I, uh, we were a much smaller group of people. A lot of people were highly educated coming from graduate school. Other people like Kerouac and Cassidy, uh, were from their own, the Kerouac and Cassidy back then, I, I used to see them every weekend because they'd come up, uh, they were working on the railway, and they'd come up, we'd be at the place it was called. I'd love to take people on a little tour of the place it was called. That'd be, it was started with a few people, but soon packed to the rafters because that was indeed the place mm -hmm. where the beats, uh, it wasn't like huge, it wasn't like uh, hate speech where they had to close down the streets. So many people showed up. Mm. I was there before that. So many people showed up because, uh, and they showed up after, I don't know if it because of, let me withdraw that, but it was after that song came out. Come to San Francisco, wear With some flowers in your hair, you'll, uh, you'll meet some friendly people there. Yeah. And we thought, that, well, by that time, it was, uh, it was uh, something was going on, you could see it, on Haight Street. Something was going on, it was going on. Uh, uh, it was going on, it seems, the uh, rent was really cheap. You got a whole flat for $100 a month. Mm -hmm. In fact, there was a lot of empty buildings, and I came from uh, a lot of empty uh, flats, apartments. There were flats with a number of rooms. Uh, I'm there in my mind. And I came, I hitchhiked in with, uh, with my mother's, uh, with the mother of my children. My oldest son is 51, and she was a black woman. So we were, uh, we were, uh, uh, certainly one of the first biracial couples to hitchhike across the country from New York City, Greenwich Village to San Francisco. And you got rides the whole way. We got rides, in fact, uh, we got rides the whole way. Uh, we made it. And in fact, I remember, uh, I think it was in New Mexico. We were in 66, feels like New Mexico. This whole uh, TV team shows up and they jumped out and they said, are you guys freedom riders? Are you making a, a, a statement of some yeah. sort? And I, well, I hadn't thought of that way, of course. So of course I was ready to speak, and yeah, in a way we are. Mm -hmm. And I realized, and we got, we made it. We made it. I remember one time. Uh, well, there's so many memories. It could be a book. My one time, for some reason, said, uh, Beverly said, "Let's go." Uh, it was the night it fall was falling, and said, "We better get off the road." And so we went, and it was in the desert. So I think it was New Mexico, but we went uh, behind this tree. A tree, it might have been a cactus in my mind. And uh, this, these two cars pulled up right where we had been, where we had been earlier, we hadn't gotten a ride. And pulled up, and these bunch of guys came up, where are they, where are they, and so on. And I realized that they met us no good. It seemed like they met us no good, and if there's gonna be a party, we were gonna be the party. <laughs> but nice. the spirit told, but then uh, we, uh, we, and, uh, as soon as the dawn broke, we got out again, and soon we were in San Francisco. And we were picked up by some friends, and we weren't taken to North Beach, as I thought, because my whole memory was, well, what I wanted to return to after a couple of years on the kibbutz in Israel, and by my well, what I, wanted, but I assumed I was returning to North Beach. When I thought of San Francisco, I thought of Sea Lights Bookstore, the place, and during the day, the bagel shop was another place we hung out. And of course, the character who I remember, who's now a legendary figure, his books are Cranial Guitar, 
I'm talking about Bob Kaufman. Mm. Bob Kaufman was the real spirit of the uh, of the Beats. He was the one who welcomed me. Welcome. Mm. When I first came in in 1957. Wonderful. And he's got a book called Crab. They put his book together. His wife uh, Eileen, who uh, we used to pick up his because he'd come back uh, and so on. And she'd find his poetry in, in his pocket, scraps of poetry would fall out of his pocket. And she kept them. And now a couple books finally came out in a book called Cranial Guitar, which is the, the, the poet. There's a poem by Kaufman that's in it. And really, I recommend that to everybody. Bob mm -hmm. Kaufman, Beat Generation. Okay. You can talk about your Ginsburgs. I knew Kerouac too, and Cassidy. Cassidy used to come, they used to come together and they were, in my mind, they were working on the railway, Southern Pacific as conductors. And they'd come and they'd be wearing their conductor's uniform. Uh, they lived in Mahanda, was it Mahanda? Mahanda, or, yeah. Uh, maybe. Uh, Ken Kesey lived in Mahanda, excuse right. me. And anyway, they come up North Beach for the weekend and they'd be there, Kerouac and Cassidy. And, uh, uh, and Cassidy would be carrying a shopping bag and in the shopping bag would be a kilo of marijuana. Mm. That's how they sponsored their trip. Yeah. And a kilo in that days, remember, marijuana in 1957, in fact, maybe even to 67, was just $10 an ounce. <laughs> $80 a kilo, that's 2.2 .2 pounds. And it was Cowboy Neil at the wheel of a bus to Never Neverland. Oh, that's, uh, that's Cassidy, yeah, that's, I met him again. Yeah. I mean, that's Keezy. Cowboy Neil, Neil Cassidy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. He was yeah. he was a driver for the bus. Yeah, exactly. You 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 bring up so many points to, and threads to pick up on. I'm, I'm fascinated. I didn't realize that you lived on a kibbutz in Israel for a couple of years. I'd I like to tie that together with the, the hippie commune movement. And, well, and I, I definitely do, and I don't believe I said that formally, but I feel that one of the big differences between the beats and the hippies was the hippies. When you came down to it, those are the real hippies were communal. Yeah. They weren't here just to get stoned. Communalists. Yeah, we just to get yesterday. stoned. Communalists. Mm -hmm. like, why, I, I, I should, anyway, uh, let me stop for a minute. Yeah, communalists, because I, and then with the death of the hippie, have you already covered the, the diggers, by the way? We, diggers get brought up uh, all over the place, yes, of course. Okay, absolutely. well I was there with Peter Berg and Peter Coyote, uh, Peter, Peter Cohen, who became uh, Peter Coyote. Okay. I think he's around. I don't know if he came to the conference, room, but anyway. Yeah, we haven't seen him around here, but he is around, and we do plan to go up to Sebastopol and talk to him too. And uh, uh, was, anyway, Peter Coyote, Peter Berg, and the Diggers came out after that song, "Come to San Francisco, wear some flowers in your hair, you'll meet some friendly people there." And we realized, well, who's that? I guess that's us. And out of it came the uh, uh, the uh, long before food not bombs. Came the feeding every day, so, and every day in the panhandle. Yeah, it was still kind of sexist. Women, mostly, mostly women doing the cooking. But it Bigger was, but, but it was a bold move of rebellion to feed people, to nurture. It, it, that's just the the irony that I love so much that it took bold rebellion to nurture human life. Yeah. Wow. And, and you can look at uh, if you wanted to figure uh, the, a lot of the there's diggers diggers dot, uh, dot org I think, and uh, you'll see that a lot of the digger papers so online. Uh, Brother, I forget his name, put it online, because we had the Digger Papers. They were like the ma Hugh Manifestos. Uh, uh, we said Manifestos, that's the other sexist thing that we're still struggling with. Hugh Manifestos. And, uh, but Digger women were definitely, there wouldn't have been Diggers without the Digger women, for sure. Mm, okay. And uh, so you had, so when we talk about the posters, when we talk about the shows at the Lavalon and so on, remember there's all people were being being fed were being fed in the panhandle. Mm. And also you saw, saw the book of the free store. The free store, yeah. The free store, and it started as a garage on, on Page Street called the Free Frame of Reference. <laughs> and somebody, somebody built a, a big picture frame and you step through it to get in because all these people were coming to San Francisco to wear some flowers in the hair. Pretty much all they knew about was getting stoned really. And uh, getting stoned really and uh, uh, Anyway, but uh, but the difference, the free store, and the idea of the free store, and and uh, well, of course, by this time, the hippies had been named by Herb Cain, the same guy who named uh, the Beatniks, named those Beatniks, Herb Cain. He was a columnist in the in the Chronicle then. Right. What's called a three dot columnist. He come up with a and he called out the Beats, the beat, the Beatniks, the Beatniks, the time of Sputnik. So Beatnik. Oh, Sputnik, right. The Beatniks in North Beach. Yeah. 
And then when uh, he had the cold side of hate, and that was how he, he coined the friend that said, I, if I have it right, I'm safe from my own um, hipstery. Uh, I call this hipstery. Uh, hipstery. He also <laughs> named the, uh, uh, also named the, the hippies. <laughs> and after the hippies, uh, uh, in the 70s, it was the one time when we named ourselves, between the hippies and the punks, we call ourselves freaks. Yeah. And that, that was self-named. Yeah, okay. That was self-named. The people who stuck around in the 70s, uh, because of course, talking about commune arts, out with the death of the hippie, that was a parade that was held with a casket that was one bad, 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 where people threw their, threw their necklaces, their roach clips, and we had roach clips, roach clips in, and it was just the hippie, because Hate Street had gotten beat way too much. Right, right. October 6, 1967, death of the hippie march. Okay, so, and out of it came uh, freaks, we, so it went, went down, and we're gonna, you're going to be speaking to somebody who's talking about the connection between the Black Power Movement and the hippies. Right. I'm waiting to talk to her, because I was there too. I was still here. Yeah. My wife is black. My children, I have seven mixed children okay. in the Fillmore. So I was totally involved there, and then on Capu. Uh, I was given a talk show on Capu, and uh, uh, all, of these, all of these are subjects for... Uh, uh, history. Yeah. I mean, you, yeah. you you could write the book, Dave. You, well, I don't know. We read the book, history. Well, you read that in the books. Yeah. Her story, her story comes out of the women's movement of the seventies. Her story. Right. They realized it was all his story. Right. So we got to tell and her. And we got some her story too. Yeah. And but what I, what I'm doing is I call hipstery, yeah. which is uh, these underground connections. Uh, a little bit. I mean, this guy's writing a book about punk rock. He talked to me, said, said, yeah, we we're talking about punk rock. Uh, we just have to mention RKL, uh, it's Rich Kids and LSD, and Christ on Prade. It come, it would come to me, and also they opened the door to uh, to the to the next just after that kind of. They were like second generation, but opened the door. The sound of uh, out of the out of the East Bay came came crashing. Uh, the ska Operation Ivy, right. Operation, which became Rancid, which became Rancid, kind of a joke band. I actually, I remember seeing them on uh, Saturday Night Live, mm -hmm. Rancid, and uh, they're, they're totally full of humor. Mm -hmm. It's like a joke about punk rock kind of joke. Kind of mockery of itself in a way. Isn't it? Isn't yeah. It? Yeah. yeah. I saw it. But Operation Ivy, who was the lead singer of Operation Ivy? But they came through. I remember I was at the first show. I was the, uh, I'd always become a kind of MC at all these places, at the farm and at Gilman Street. And I met, so it's like MC at Gilman. Gilman was a cooperative, a collective, uh, loosely connected with the magazine Maximum. Uh, Tim Yohannan, Maximum Tim, Rock and Roll. Maximum, uh, but a little looser than that. But anyway, because he, uh, he, he had his idea of who was in and who was out uh, with uh, Tim Yohannan. He and I would see each other and we knew each other, but we only, he was connected to the, his, his idea of revolution was the RCP, the Revolutionary Communist Party. And I remember when he declared, uh, when he declared, up, uh, when he declared, uh, uh, when he declared, wait, we'll come back and say, when he could declare a bunch of skinhead Nazis and they weren't, and I got up and I got a snub, it's gonna come a second up. From New York City. They were uh, they were down. They were badass. They were in New York. I'm talking about Agnostic uh, Firm. I'm talking about Agnostic Firm, of course. Yay! Hey, ding 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 ding. <laughs> <laughs> so Punk they, trivia for a hundred days. They took a they took a, they came here and it was a big show. Uh, uh, Toxic Reason played with them yeah. right over here on uh, right over here on uh, uh, anyway, I think on Broadway. Was, no, down here. That was down here. It was kind of like a they didn't dare to have them on Broadway. That was going to be too bad. Uh, I'll think about. Anyway, it was down here. And so everybody gathered. Big New York hardcore show. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. And because uh, uh, Tim Yohannan had declared them as a bunch of uh, racist Nazi, oh. and I knew they weren't. Oh, they weren't at all, no. In fact, our lead singer, uh, Vinny, was a Mexican, little Mexican Vinny Stigma. Fuck yeah, well, how do we know all this, brother? I'm a punk, man. <laughs> yeah, but you were there, you were six years old or so bad. <laughs> I was born in 71, 86, I was a 15-year-old punk. Yeah, this is 71. This is when, uh, uh, this is time when, uh, when Bob Dylan had said, the music of the cafe and night and revolution in the air. And he wasn't talking about punk rock, or was he? 
It's hard to tell about Dylan then, because yeah. uh, by this time he was getting hard for him just to walk out and be among the people. Yeah. That's for sure. Yeah, that was more or less behind him, even by 70, that's sad. But anyway, uh, that's when Bowen Bags, I'm stat oh, Sound of Music was the place. You ever hear that one? No. No, that was like a, no, maybe, maybe, it was right here on the worst, on the worst street of the Tenderline. Okay. Uh, right down, right. Sound you know. of Music. I guess I've seen on fly, old flyers. Yeah, Sound of Music. And uh, that's very toxic reason, out of Indianapolis. And uh, I thought it was kind of weird talking about the summer of love. Yeah, we were talking about your love. Well, here's the thing. Uh, one more, um, you know, through line I want to draw, a connection I want to make with you, because you were talking about the Beats, and you were there, you were here in 57, so you really saw the passing of the torch from the Beats to the hippie, to the flower children. What, what did, what, 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 yeah. what did the 60s movement, the, the people in the 60s movement, what did they take from the Beats? What were the ideals, values, or cultural, artistic style? What, what did they get from the Beats? What well, was transferred? Well, I was just the top of my head. I was there, uh, out of the commune arts, uh, are the communards. And remember, we're talking about the communes. We're talking about the death of the hippie. We're talking about people leaving the hate. We're talking about people going up to Mem Mendo and Humboldt and starting a marijuana growing communes. Mm -hmm. Am I right? Yeah. And this is a time when it was illegal, a time in which they had the, the helicopters go over. You have your six foot plant, helicopters go over. You'd be dragged off in handcuffs. Your plants would be cut down. They're six feet high. You've been doing all you. Mm. Some of you these motherfucking helicopters. Mm. Motherfucking helicopters. And so people got pretty badass. People kept on going. They were going to stop. Also, we had the politics. We had uh, the politics. We had uh, more formal Marxist, like Revolutionary Communist Party and the Weather Underground and so on. But a lot of people were affected by it without necessarily joining up and saying, I'm a Marxist, London is Maoist. Although Mao's, the Mao's politics definitely affected. But I think with the, with the idea of going from beatniks to hippies to freaks and then punks and then like NBC News and cops, uh, the Dicks, and coming up and the politics of that, which was hardcore revolutionary, and we came out of the communes, where of course the squad, where we, they, we didn't talk about communes back in the punk rock days, but if you're a tutor punk rocker, you lived in the squats. Yeah, the vats. The vats. The beer vats. I was at the vats. Yeah. I was at the vats. Yeah. And RKL that... spent time at the vats. DRI, MDC, they all lived at the vats. Well, how do you know all that? But anyway, you're right. You're the perfect person for me to. <laughs> who would have thought? See what the spirit does? It brings us together. You're the spirit person, perfect spirit person yeah. to, to keep me going here. Cool, man. I'm glad I could inspire you, Dave. The best. I do a radio show myself on, right. on uh, my Mutiny Radio. Every Friday, and the, the idea of turning an interview into a conversation is just this: you have to know something about what you're what you, yeah. the person. You'll like, hear a lot of interviews; where they don't know shit, yeah. but they but they ask questions. Well, I'm happy to jump on there with you. You invited me before when we were campaigning for Bernie together, and we didn't quite I didn't get it together. But uh, maybe we should just do that. Go ahead and have a chat on the air. Well, yeah, let's do this. Is every Friday, mm -hmm. uh, three to six. I came. One of the reasons I came here was to invite people to come down. They can call in. Or come down. There you go. <laughs> uh, yeah, yesterday we had calling in this brother, I think his name is Montgomery, and he's got this art show over at the Hate Street Art uh, Art Gallery. I'm going to go tomorrow. He's going to be opening and hoping people from here, I think, will come here. My co-host Val wrote this. Uh, yeah, Hate Street Art Center, 215 Hate Street. Scott Montgomery, do you know who he is? Right, they're doing the exhibition over there. Yeah, yeah. When, well, I mean, he's going to be there all day tomorrow. I'm going right. to go tomorrow. Good, okay. And that used to be, uh, during this time, that we're talking about the punk rock time, that was the, uh, that was the UC Extension Center, the, all those buildings. It was gone through the head, so that's where it is now. So everything is connected. It wants you to see it that way. And that's what I call hipstery. Mm, brother, everything is connected, and we love your hipstery, and we so appreciate you sharing it with us. And, you know, we always love to rap with a hug, brother. And, and what... Uh, what uh, yeah. And what came out of it, when, out of when it. I think at 79, okay. at 79, um, I was thinking, I should, uh, just before I turned 79 years old, so I said, it's soon to be 80 years old, blah, blah, old man now, oh, blah, blah, it's all of my life's behind me, and then the spirit speaks to me, and uh, we're going to this to be a continuum, the spirit speaks to me, and here's what she said, learn to love, love to learn, this never ends. 
And I said, that's it. That's right. That's what life is about. Learn to love, love to learn. This never ends. Let me give you four lines that came from the Spirit, which when I heard this, I said, that's how I roll. That's how to roll. It's these four lines. Cast a wide net. Find the common thread. Let life flourish. And then don't panic. Just keep it organic. Beautiful. So that's what we're doing, brother. We're finding the common thread. The common thread, the beats, the hippies, the freaks, and the punks. And where are we now? With, with Trump. Well, time will tell. I hear about the building of the resistance. I'm trying to be a uh, uh, voice of that, we hope. The building of the resistance. We have uh, people coming together. And I realize that there's people, and I can see wherever I go. I can see there's somebody or a few people who are beginning, I call it intelligent people, but that's not, but people are aware that something's going on and we better get together. Mm -hmm. And Bernie, Bernie, who's almost as old as I am, yeah. he's 75, yeah. and Bernie picked that up and carried it along and we'll see what, what emerges. Yeah, what goes next. Now, another thing that came to me, and some other words that came to me, this is a few years ago, when it was coming out of the Rainbow Gathering, that year we were 9,500 feet high in the Rockies, and it's coming down, and it's the people, all some of the old rainbows, oh, it's gonna be terrible, blah, 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 we're too old, we can't. But I said, it was a beautiful gathering. And I said, what is it, why is it? And it's been since since. And then the, these words came to me. Goddesses galore, goddesses, goddesses galore, sisters glorious. That's goddesses galore, sisters glorious. And I realized, now it's time for the women stepping up. I see women are stepping up everywhere. And it's time for the dudes, dudes to step back a bit. Mm -hmm. A lot of them don't even realize it. Back in the 80s, you know, in punk rock, back in the 80s, there was a lady, was a, women really stepped on, it was called Riot Girls. Heard of Riot Girls? Riot Girls, yeah, of course. And they, well, of course, you know, these two big guys. That was a big Bikini Kill. Yeah. And the Gets. The what, Gets, yeah. You know Riot girls. And then Mia Zapata. She Mia was Zapata. murdered. Yeah. Uh, a moment They're a Seattle band. Yeah, Mia. And then um, Joan Jett joined the band and did some commemorative tours in her honor and, and a benefit for her. And if there's anyone who's, uh, who really set the stage, I'm uh, going up for what uh, where punk women should be, it was Joan Jett. Yeah. She was punk runaways. woman. My other uh, runaways. Yeah. And, uh, and then uh, we have Mia Zapata and the Jets. But, and their, their line was, their line of course was, smash patriarchy, smash patriarchy. And now we, now we just, that was the smash patriarchy, we're stepping up right girls. But now what I see happening with goddesses galore, sisters glorious, the women are just rolling around these sexist dudes and just keeping on going. And I look around, I sat there at the gathering and I came back and I see it everywhere, women stepping up. And let's step back a bit. Women stepping up. We, we, let's mention, I, I think we have a joint friend in Mona Lisa. Mona Lisa Wallace, the woman manifesto. Yeah, woman, there she's stepping up, and that's for sure, and she's not alone. Sometimes it seems, it seems to her that she might be alone, but she keeps going, because these dudes, I can just shake my head. But the good words I want to say to this is goddesses galore, sisters glorious. We're about the same too. Bernie has done what he's done, he's, and I'm waiting for women Women are going to be stepping up and taking this movement. Uh, all, uh, all this movement with Trump and his motherfuckers. I see women stepping up. Look at Rachel. Rachel Ma Maddow. Is it Rachel Maddow? From CNBC. Did you ever see her? Uh, MS, excuse me, from MSNBC. Did you ever yeah, see I've her? seen her. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. She's so very sharp. I wonder, I worry because we got this. Uh, I really worry to think about it. Yeah, I suggest yes. if you want to see it, CNBC, uh, women stepping up. Rachel Maddow, she steps up totally, and I worry, because now we see this Trump-Putin connection, this Trump-Putin connection, and all Putin has to do, if you look at the history right over there, he just gets on the phone and somebody shot dead. Now, Rachel Maddow in, uh, in Russia would be a dead woman by now. So I just worry, but she does steps up every day, at, what is it, at six o'clock, I, I just hear it on the radio. And she just lays it out there. What's happening? Now it's every day shit is happening. So we better get together, brothers and sisters. 
and it's good to look back to the summer of love and see that love is what it's all about, that it's about learn to love, love to learn, the, the, the learn to love, love to learn, and love will get you everywhere, hate will get you nowhere. Well, what about Donald Trump? Well, he's, I know, I know I was speaking of the Beatles back then. Of course, I was in Heat Street back then. I was in the Heat. I remember walking on Page Street with my crew back there about 66. And we're walking down Page Street. And we've been hearing the radio, the Beatles. And uh, my friend uh, really knew music. May he was with Keith Redmond. He died and uh, he, he went to, uh, he went to the bet. I mean, he went to uh, Katmandu. And bad bad time, that was the thing to do, was, you know, was to go to get to Katmandu. Then you really, and he never came back, and he died there. Keith Redman, a musical genius, a genius. He was one, heroin was his, uh, 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 anyway, uh, but Keith, he's here in my mind, alive. But anyway, Keith said, listen to that, he said. Uh, these guys are special. And we hear and they're coming out of a window. It was the Beatles, we hardly knew them. And it was, uh, uh, hardly knew, he said, those guys are doing stuff with music that hasn't been done before. And I listened, and he said, you're right. It was 66, I think. And then uh, I'm saying that, hey, sister, good enough. We're having a reunion, a revival. We're showing these uh, academics a thing or two. But anyway, uh, and he said, and the song I was saying, love will get you everywhere, hate will get you nowhere. And I thought, well, what about Trump? And then I remember the Beatles song, Nowhere Man. And that was like 65, 66, the Nowhere Man. And there's anybody who's a good egg, 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 egg of, 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 of the Nowhere Man, it's Donald Trump. He's a Nowhere Man. He thought that he's everything. Now his life is a living hell. And all he can do is make, a, make other people's lives a living hell. Fuck. Well, our lives are pretty good. Let's make everyone's lives around us pretty good. How That's about what that? it's about, finding one another. <laughs> yeah. I'm not a, you know, they back then they were Marxist, Leninist, Mao Zedong. No, no. No, you're it's Diamond about, Dave. It's about finding one another and the fact we're all in this together. Yes. We're all in this together, together, together. Thank you, brother. You got it, brother. Well, thank you. Well, it could be a two-week continued. Mm -hmm. but we will. Yeah, any we'll questions? talk on the air, too. Any questions? You covered so much territory, man. If you, say, I always, if you got any questions, I might have some answers. Okay, we'll follow up. If you up have any you. answers, I might have some questions. Good. We'll follow up with you. Thank you, Brother Dave. Always a pleasure. Well, fuck yeah. Okay, okay. let's wrap with a hug, my man.